I'm going to take you through some of the examples on driveworkslive.com as a way of showing you how your products could look and be configured on the web. But before I do, I just want to say a few words about the guiding principles that we adhere to here at Driveworks. When we created Driveworks at the turn of the century, we wanted to make sure that we were creating a product that companies could use themselves to configure their own products, not just in terms of the actual configuration process, but also in terms of the setup. We understand that people's products are dynamic, that they change over time, and as they change, we feel that it's important that companies can update their configuration system themselves with their own rules and create a new look and feel as their company branding changes. So with Driveworks, we've created a product that is highly configurable, not just in terms of the look and feel on the web, but in terms of the documents it creates, the data that it can integrate, and the whole workflow of how you interact with the people who are specifying your products, whether those are internal salespeople, engineers, external salespeople, distributors, or your customers, so that you can make sure that the right information is created at the right time in your process. We've created DriveWorksLive.com as a way of you experiencing DriveWorks in different ways, whether that is to configure 3D content, to experience it on a tablet PC, or in different browsers. And because a lot of the DriveWorks sites involve configuring 3D, not every browser can support it, all of the modern ones do. But to see if you're ready, you can just click on the Are You Ready button and it will show you if you aren't. There may be a few steps that it advises you you can take in order to make sure that you are 3D ready. So knowing that you are 3D ready, I'll take you through some of the examples. The first one here is a link to our out-of-the-box DriveWorks Live experience. And DriveWorks Live in a browser is highly configurable, but this is as you would see it out of the box, and this is standalone. So we've modified this a little bit using some of the tools within DriveWorks. So we've already pre-populated it with a guest and guest login, and we've changed some of the words here. You can do things like auto-login if you want, or you can embed it in your website, which we'll come to later. So these are just some examples of how you can configure products in DriveWorks. The first one is creating a picture frame, whereby we can configure the picture frame in terms of the sizes, so we can go for, here we've created one that is a typical size with a few in. We've got a custom size where you can put in exactly what you want or very custom where you can hand type the values. I'll go for a complete listing of our standards and I'll go for one that is this size. I'll choose whether I want a mount, whether that's a single or a double mount. I'll go for a single one that's an inch and a half wide. We can then configure the color of that so we can go for a colour that is more appropriate to what we want. We can choose a frame style, and here we've got five to pick from. And it's changing not just the, the image, but obviously it will be updating the bill of materials in the background and everything else that gets created. And then we can change the colour of that too to something that maybe looks, looks more appropriate. So we'll go with that. We'll choose a few more options. We'll choose a hanger on the back and we'll choose a glazing style. And as I'm configuring this, everything is updating in the background, including the bill of material. And if you have a go with this site yourself and fill out your email address, then all of that information, images, drawings, 2D models, all of that information will be sent to you. And you click the button and it will be sent. You get to see a quotation. As soon as you do that, there's a quotation for the product that we've just configured. And as DriveWorks creates the data in the background, we've created here a picking list of the items within that. And we've also created an image of what our picture frame will look like as a custom picture frame. And the outputs that you can create are many and varied, including Word documents, Excel documents, 3D models, 2D drawings, and also data going into other backend systems. I'll just go through a few more of these examples. This is an example of a cupboard, and this does have the ability to configure a 3D model. This is the 3D model that we're configuring, and we can choose different materials. We can choose different door styles, 
and you can see that the 3D model here is updating as we do that. We can choose glass. We can choose to see a 2D preview. If we're on the 2D preview, let's change the size to something else and you'll see all that update. You'll see the bill of material that will also update as we change things. We can see the pricing. If I just change the height here, we can see that update. You can see what documents we're going to produce. And if we go back to 3D preview, you'll see that this combination has not been created before. Bearing in mind there are billions of permutation just of this one cupboard. Then this is actually communicating with a seat of SolidWorks and it's going to build that model and put it back in the browser for me in real time. And now that's back in the browser. And it's exactly the size that I want. We can zoom in, rotate and pan that in 3D. And if I want to then fill my information out here and put my email address in, you'll see that as we're filling out the form, there's validation so that we can't uh, proceed if we don't have all the right information. And that point, we can click on the send quote button and again, it will email me all of the drawings and documents bills of materials, cutting lists and everything. I can see some of them here in the browser. The information that you show people in the browser as opposed to what gets emailed, but also as opposed to all of the other information that gets created is completely up to you. And that's highly configurable in something called specification flow in DriveWorks that we'll get onto later. If we just go and have a look at a few more of these, we have here an entrance canopy. In terms of configuring this entrance canopy, we can pick currency, we can put different sizes in, different depths. You'll see I put something that was outside of the bounds that could have been selected there, so it's corrected that for me. And here we're configuring a product, we've essentially created a wizard in DriveWorks for configuring this product. If we don't want a wizard and we want it in a single form, this particular example has the ability to change how that's done. And this is all using standard functionality of DriveWorks. And you'll see that this form looks completely different to any other form I've previously shown. And in this example, we can even do things like changing the font color. So let's go for a blue font. Let's even change the font itself. Let's go for a slightly bigger font. A different font altogether too and you don't have to have that configurability in your forms but this has just been created to show how easy it is to have things like that change based on rules because driveworks is a rules based system and there's a number of technologies that we're showing here one is our rules based system whereby as we enter things in the form it can make decisions on our behalf and i'll just cancel this one and go and find a different one but also our form technology. If I have a look at this industrial shelving demo, here we're going to do a hierarchy of projects. So we have a room and in that room, we're going to fill it with rows of shelving. And within each row, we can have different bays and within each bay, we can have different number of shelves and all is highly configurable in a hierarchy of projects. So if we click to start this, the first thing we're going to do is set up some defaults for the whole room. And in this particular case, I'll select to have aluminum shelving, and maybe I might select the weight next, or maybe I want to choose the order that I do that selection. So if I go for a fixed foot, then maybe that's going to change some of the other options that I can have. If I go for no foot, you'll see that it's already restricted my weight down to only allowing 750 kilograms. Now, maybe I actually do want to be able to put a thousand kilograms on there. So if I select that, you'll notice now that everything has gone red. And it, what it's saying is I may need a different foot in there. I can't have a thousand kilograms without a foot. So, so by changing some of the other options, then it makes sure I've got a valid input. If I then set up the default color, I'm going to go for blue uprights 
and orange shelves. I've got the size of my room that I can put in, but I want to make sure that whatever I specify will fit in the room. So at this point, I'm going to start adding rows. So I click to add the row, and it's saying, okay, I want to add the first bay, but actually there's some defaults per row that I can put in as well, which would be the depth of the whole row and the default height that I'm going to use. So I'm going to change the depth to be 654, and I'll change the default height to be 2,500. At that point, I'm going to click to add that first bay. And here you can see that it has indeed taken on that depth. It's taken on that default height. And I can then choose a width that I feel appropriate. Click OK to accept that. And you'll see it started to build up my row because I've specified the first bay. Let's add another bay in this particular one. Let's only have two shelves and let's bring the height right down. And let's maybe change the height of the bottom shelf. And you can see with the forms technology that we have in DriveWorks, we can create some feedback to the user so they can see what that shelf would look like. And I'll just add one more. And in this particular case, I'll accept the default height and I'll make it that bit wider. So now I have this, I can revisit any of these at any time clicking the buttons here. I can maybe for the whole row change the depth and change the default height. If I change the default height, it will only then change the default for any shelves I do from that point on. But the depth, if I change the depth here, it will change it for all of those bays that I've already specified. And so if I click to accept that bay, that row, let's go and add in another set. Just put a few more in there. And I can specify my room full of shelving very, very quickly. And as you can see in DriveWorks, it's not all about just configuring or optimizing a product. Having this visual nature to the DriveWorks forms and this visual nature that is very easy to set up in the first place gives a very rich experience, especially when, as a company, you want to push out the filling of these forms further down the chain as far as eventually your customers. They need this level of feedback and it's a good way of ensuring that whatever they fill in can actually be manufactured and is actually what they want to order. And so you can see now having filled this out I can still, at this point, change some of the items on the contract. So if I decide that the colour at this point isn't what I want, then I can change that colour and it will update it, not just in all of the bills of materials for every single shelf uh, and each bay and each row, but also in terms of the uh, models and drawings. So I can update that in one place. I can see that if I change to plywood, it's recalculated the cost of every component based on that one change and updated the price for me. You'll notice that the room length is above the eight meters it was originally at. So it's, it's upped the size of the room. It's made it longer to accommodate that. I can then fill out some more information about me. Put in my company name. And here, this one's been set up, A, to make sure that when you fill this out, and I recommend that you do and you have a go, that you can see the drawings and information that we produce. But also, you can see how it would be for one of your distributors to fill out, whereby they can pick maybe from a list of customers. And it's really important that this information comes and is integrated into your other company systems. So here we have all of the company information coming out of the back-end system. So this would come out of wherever you have it. Maybe it's in a CRM system or in an ERP system. The pricing in this particular case is also coming out of a back-end system. It's coming out of a database of available material, available costs for that material. 
So as we pick to have the shelving bigger, it knows what the square um, area is of the shelving it requires, and it knows the cost per square area, in this case it's per square metre. And it knows the cost of the uprights and the cross members in terms of the running cost per metre. And because Drivex is a rules-based system, it can add all of that up as well. And if I click to design room again, we'll get some of the outputs. Here we've got a quotation that we'll do a quote for each row that's in there, as you can see. But in this particular case, we haven't yet created a bill of materials. And that's because in terms of the flow of information, we wanted that to be a choice. So we have here the ability to now create, once we've designed it, the bill of material for each bay. And it will go ahead and create all of those as individual documents. And again, that's just a choice when we set that up. Some of the other examples we have on here do make use of our 3D technology. So if I go in and configure a trailer, you'll see that we have a trailer here in 3D. And as we configure this in 3D, you'll see things like the color change, maybe the whole style of the trailer will change in 3D. We might change the door that's on there. So you can see that's changed the door to be a completely different type. We can add, diff add sidebars to it. If we zoom in on the lighting at the back, we can choose different lighting. And it will update the lighting that we're showing on there. And again, I encourage you to have a go with this yourself. Obviously, it's not just about the online 3D experience. And I will discuss the, the 3D part of DriveWorks a, a little later. But also, we want to be able to, again, create all of the manufacturing information, the bills of materials, all the pricing and everything else. And again, that is very easy to configure for your products inside DriveWorks. So again, if you have a go on this site and put in your details, you will be sent a 3D model and all of the manufacturing information will be created in the background. Just talking about 3D, we have an example here that shows the different 3D capabilities of DriveWorks. And this particular project actually walks you through what you can do with 3D in DriveWorks. The 3D file format that we have in DriveWorks is our own. It's an export from SolidWorks. So we can create a very rich 3D experience, but it isn't just a file format. It's a lot more than that. It's a configurable file format so that you can export a model from SolidWorks and then configure it in a browser. And I'll just show you some of the ways that that's done. So I'll just click next. So here you can see our 3D technology. We have here we're running in Google Chrome. It's not using a, a plugin at all. And we have this 3D, which is an export from SolidWorks. Manipulating the 3D on the web is very easy. Left click rotates, middle click will pan and mouse wheel will zoom. And just to show you the levels of configurability we have, and when you have a go yourself, you can read the explanation text, but because um, I'm taking you through this, I'll just switch that off. So here, based on a rule, and literally the rule is linked to which button is clicked. So you click a button and it's changing the image. These are three separate files that were exported as DriveWorks 3D files from SolidWorks. And that's one way of using 3D in the web. You pre-create the things you want to show by exporting them from SolidWorks. But because it's our file format and it's highly configurable, let's say, for instance, I wanted to change the color of three of the elements of this piece of playground equipment. So the actual slide color, the back color, and the frame color may all change independently. And I've got a few different ways of showing how that color can be selected in DriveWorks. But actually, I've got thousands of permutations, so I wouldn't want to create thousands of exports from SolidWorks and then just based on the color I select, show a different file. So because DriveWorks has a configurable file format, I can change things like the color and appearance and texture of these really easily and really quickly in a browser. And you can see these change as we're making those selections. So as well as changing appearance, I can change other things as well. 
you saw with the trailer how we had one 3D model and we were swapping different bits in and out. Again, using this example, if I want to show this with a 600 long slide, I can. But if I want to put a different length of slide in, I can also do that without having to create a whole new assembly with that longer slide in. And again, if I want to put the 1200 long one in, I can. And I'm using the same assembly, I'm just swapping one of the components in it. The length that I choose may not actually exist. So if I choose a slide length that hasn't been created before, I can click to preview that in SOLIDWORKS. And it, this particular case, it has created it in SOLIDWORKS. It saved it out as a driverless 3D file and it's shown it me on the web on the fly. And that's very, very scalable. Even if you've got many people filling out these forms, you can scale DriveWorks server side to serve a lot of people. But also it works as a queue. But also it remembers what it's done as we go along. So now I've created this slide that is 1268 long. It can continue using that for the next person. And I'll just preview that again, just to show that uh, happening again. And you can see now that's recreated that at 855 long. And if you have a good number of these, you can actually also use DriveWorks to pre-create lots of content for you by putting the permutations in a spreadsheet, doing a fill down or however you want to create those permutations and importing that into DriveWorks and leaving it running for 10 minutes, an hour, depending on how many you've got, maybe even a few days to pre-create all of that content that you can then do a certain amount of swapping in. The trailer one, by the way, is about 25 different exports from SOLIDWORKS of all the individual components and then nine rules to swap the right bits on based on what changes on the form. And then finally in this example, we're showing here the fact that you can do a lot of this all in one go. So here I've got my frame as part of the playground equipment. On side one, I may want to put a wall on there. Maybe on side two, I want to put a step. On side three, let's put an extension sticking out of the side. And on side four, let's put a slide. And we can choose a different length to make that. And if we want to go back at any point where we had the wall, let's make that an extension. So we get a much bigger playground. And you can see here, just in this example alone, the number of permutations means that under normal circumstances, if you were creating one model for every permutation, you'd have, because there are four options, but there are quite a number of slides, so in every side there are 10 options. It's not 10 times 10 times 10 times 10, it's 10 plus 10 plus 10. So the number of permutations are not great, especially then when we go back to changing the color of all of this so that we can you know, maybe change the slide color altogether and swap out everything that's blue for a different color change everything that's tomato for something that is silver. Permutations now are in the billions. But again, we've got very few files. It's very easy to set up in DriveWorks, very easy to set up that your products can be configured in this way. Other examples we have of contract level things. So this is a contract and on this contract we're putting many lintels. So we can do things like uh, selecting a customer, either typing in new or picking existing. If you type in new, then DriveWorks has wizards for you putting that data back into whatever backend system you've got. I can add some contract details. Let's pull through the site address. I've clicked a button. That's actually a macro button in DriveWorks, but you don't have to write any code to get things like that working. There's a whole load of tasks that you can just set up using wizards in DriveWorks. I can then add items onto this. And in this particular example, we have some standard items and some custom. So the standard items are more a catalog of items where I'm drilling into a catalog. And once I've drilled in, I can pick 
that particular item from the catalogue and maybe just enter in a length that I want and then add that to the contract. If I go back in, this time I'll add something that's custom. I'll select from a, an apex custom arch and then I'm really configuring something that's never been created before rather than just cutting something to length from a stock item. This one here, DriveWorks, knows that that is custom and so it will design it in the background and create all of the 3D models and 2D drawings, bills of materials, cutting lists, DXFs, DWG files, PDFs that it needs to be able to manufacture it. And I'll just add a couple more standard items. And now you can see that I've built up my contract. I have a warning down here that I haven't entered all of my information because I want to make sure that I get this not just sent to me in an email, but as part of the flow to make sure that people know who filled this out. Once I've filled that in, I'm verified. You'll notice the task at the bottom disappears and I can click OK. And at this point I can submit it. Now all of the information will get created in the background. We create a quote to start off with showing all the standard and custom items. But as other things get created in the background, I'll see them appear here. So the first one was a HTML based document. We've also created one in Excel and that's also now been emailed through to me as well. Now here I was showing using DriveWorks in a standard out of the box theme. We have a few different ways of using it out of the box. This is another way. It's a slightly different look and feel. Here the project list is in a long list here. The history list includes some images of what we've designed, including, as you can see back here, the actual image of the custom frame that we created. But you can also embed it in your own website. If I go to this link here, this is a link to configuremyproduct.com. And if we go to configuremyproduct.com, you can see that I can specify the trailer directly within my existing website. And at this point, I'm not even leaving the website to be able to configure that product. We have some other examples in here, things like a hydraulic cylinder. Again, showing the selection in any order of choices in DriveWorks where we can clear different ones and then select those based on the order that I want to select them. This one also has the ability to preview this inside the browser. And as you can see, that's now loaded that through for me so that I can see that in 3D. I can even maximize that and have a proper look. Many DriveWorks customers sell their products through distributors. So we have a solution that is specifically for the internal sales guy or distributor method. So if I sign into this, again, I'll go in with guest and guest just to show that you can do this too. And I click to log in. You'll notice now that DriveWorks is looking a lot more like an application. I can still see the items that I've configured in terms of the contracts, the industrial shelving that I did, the wooden door, so you can see here that we have different states. The state is just where that particular contract or that particular quotation is up to at that particular point, and that's highly configurable in DriveWorks. But we can also search and sort for previous customer information, for previous uh, specification information, so that we can edit or copy or reuse information that we've entered before. And this involves a whole set of security settings so that as a distributor you can set a distributor up in their own team to make sure that no other distributor can see what they can see but even then within that distributor you can have team leaders and different access rights for all the while you'd be able to see what everybody had done what everybody had quoted and involve different people in the process of specifying products with different approval steps or different permissions at different times dependent on not just the rules within the project but depending on the, the state that it's in in the workflow.